Amen. We're thrilled to invite yourself in to Amen. join us tonight. And also at a later date, got to my right, uh, Brother James Wilcott, to my left, uh, Brother Jonathan Melton, thankful for these men who labor today as they're here tonight to, to help us share the word. And uh, we want, as always, we encourage you to get your good King James Bible and Word for Word translation, follow along, take notes, and uh, judge everything we preach and teach based upon the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And not what someone down the road is saying in their opinion. For the Word of the Lord is right. All of God's works are done in truth. Amen. But even before we proceed into that, uh, as excited as we are about bringing the Word tonight, We'll go before the Lord in prayer, lift up the needs of the, the church family and local and, and yes. those that are abroad tonight, amen. Good to have those that join us tonight, amen. Good to see Brother Reed, always faithful every Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Just thank the Lord for him and all of you, amen. amen. And uh, so, even though we can't see you tonight, uh, amen, just, we're just going to believe with you in the spirit tonight. And by faith, whatever need that you have, uh, we're just going to be believe God for it tonight, amen. If you need healing in your body tonight, let's just join together in, in faith tonight for that healing, amen. So and we want to encourage you to help us pray tonight, amen. So how about uh, right now, let's just go before the Lord in prayer. <coughs> Excuse me, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up the needs of the the church family tonight, the body of Christ, Lord. And we're asking for you to move on behalf of every single need, Lord. We know that there are those that are sick in their body tonight, Lord. And they need a healing touch, and we're looking to you tonight, Lord, for a healing miracle to heal and to make every bit whole, to heal physically, mentally, and spiritually. Whatever the ailment, whatever the illness, whatever sickness and disease, there's none too great. For our God tonight, Lord, we set it before you. We believe it in faith in the Lamb tonight. What he did in Calvary, we can be saved, delivered, and healed tonight by your mighty power. Lord God, we're thankful for this provision that's in the atonement tonight. Lord, we lift up to all of the church family tonight. Lord, this, uh, this position across the country tonight. Lord, their assemblies, the people, uh, the pastor, the family tonight. We lift them all up in prayer tonight, yes. believing you for uh, your favor. Lord, believing you to, to bless these tonight that you raised up uh, that are still determined to preach nothing but Jesus Christ and crucified and the yes. exclusive message of the cross. And we're believing for you to draw people into their assemblies, Lord, and then also to their streaming tonight and whenever they go out, Lord, at different times, we pray, God, that you Hallelujah. draw people Thank by you. your spirit to that place Hallelujah. that is indeed sold out oh, to the message Lord. of the cross. Yes. Lord, determined to know nothing else is preaching the exclusive message of the one teaching the exclusive message of the cross and willing to, to warn of everything else, Lord. And we pray, God, Hallelujah. that you just bless them, Hallelujah. Lord, encourage Hallelujah. them. Jesus. Know there's times as we feel like that we're standing alone, uh, Lord, in this final hour, uh, declaring this truth, Lord, but we know that always we're really not standing alone. There, is, right. a, uh, there is a people that's Thank standing you, on the, uh, the front line. Hallelujah. Lord, we may not see them or hear them from them all the time, but. Uh, even with that said, we know that you are always standing with us. The Apostle Paul said the Lord stood with me when all uh, had departed, Lord. And, thank you. and uh, we're not thank saying you, that any has departed from this fellowship, but we're saying sometimes we feel like uh, that we're standing alone. But Lord, uh, we're believing we're believing the Lord for strength, and uh, we're believing the Lord for uh, his grace, Lord, to help us, uh, Lord, to oh, keep our, our, our feet glued to Calvary, uh, uh, that place oh, called Lord. Calvary, and, and our hands oh, welded to that oh, gospel Lord. plow as oh, we cling to the cross all the way to the, way to the end, yes. Lord, uh, oh, and help us once again to Lord. continue to be Lord declared. God. This great gospel, Lord, Thank with the uh, plainness of speech and clarity, Lord, without fear or favor toward men yes. tonight, Lord, let it go forth with uh, and that your word tells us it won't return, Lord. We're believing that it accomplish uh, what it's set forth to do tonight, Lord. We're believing for souls saved, bodies is broken, and lives changed by your mighty power tonight, Lord. Yes, tonight, Lord. We love you. Once again, uh, we 
Jesus. It's a privilege, Lord, that we're able to uh, sit out and share this good news tonight, Lord. We are humbled by that, Lord, but we are also excited uh, at the opportunity to do such, Lord. And we love you. We'll give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> and everybody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. And I apologize for the for the uh, the cough tonight. Amen. That seems to be uh, prevalent everywhere we go. Uh, and recently, amen. But nonetheless, we want to talk to you a little bit tonight uh, about uh, partaking of the whole lamb. We have a choice uh, that's been set before us. You know, the, uh, are we going to be partakers of a little leaven or we're going to be partakers of the whole lamb? Amen. amen. I, tonight, I choose to embrace the. The lamb, every bit of it, amen. amen. Uh, and Praise to not God. pick and choose and, and to leave anything laying or to sweep anything to the side, but uh, uh, we're Praise desirous God. of the whole lamb, like the lamb Praise slain, God. amen. Yeah. The whole Hallelujah. sacrifice, Praise Praise God. God. and uh, we're going to define the, the, the leaven a little bit more tonight. We have been dealing with that, we have, Brother James, Brother Jonathan, I have. We, uh, have preached topics upon leaven, what it is, and and uh, on the Tuesday trumpet and on Sunday morning we've dealt with it. But we're just going to deal with it one more time tonight. Probably won't end here, but as long as we're here and and and, and as long as we're on on this planet by the grace of God, we will continue to deal these with these things that that play the the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I want to just uh, read you a, a verse of scripture and uh, beginning in Exodus, amen. And when I see Exodus, it's all, first thing coming to mind is always deliverance, amen. Delivered by the mighty power, uh, uh, the powerful hand of God, amen. And that powerful hand of God has been outstretched to us through his son, Jesus. Amen. What he did at Calvary, amen. Hallelujah. That's where the connection is made, amen. Yes. And, uh, uh, so when I think about Exodus, I, I immediately think about deliverance. Deliverance from uh, uh, the, the the hand of the enemy, amen, and those things that hold us captive, amen. But I'm going to read <coughs> Exodus chapter 34 and verse 25, and then I'm going to uh, uh, be uh, going to several different scriptures throughout the Word of God, amen. But uh, Exodus chapter 34, verse 25, it says this. This is the word of God toward Moses and, and uh, to us as well, amen, because it's applicable today. Paul would, uh, would say basically this same thing in, in his writings, which I'm headed to in just a moment. But Exodus chapter 34 and, and verse 25 says, Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Amen. 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 Now that's just pretty point blank. Yes. Uh, no beat around the bush, strong. It just means exactly what it means. And it's not hard to understand. Amen. But God says, uh, Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto morning. That means that uh, we're to consume the, the whole sacrifice. We're not leaving anything on the table. You know, uh, the church likes to pick and choose uh, what they partake of, but we're to partake of the whole the whole lamb. Amen. Amen. We're to consume the whole sacrifice, and we're we're not to be partakers of the sacrifice with leaven. Amen. We're not to insert our thoughts, our opinions, our ways. We're not to embrace the uh, the opinions or the thoughts of, of others. And uh, to me, once again, leaven is anything that would corrupt the whole, anything that would corrupt the sacrifice, anything uh, that man uh, wants to add to the gospel. Amen. Anything that will corrupt. The word leaven, uh, as I say, that actually means corruption. The word leaven means corruption, amen. Now let me read it one more time, Exodus 34 and 25. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, do not offer 
of the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. They who shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left in the morning. Amen. And uh, amen. And, and in our presentation of the gospel, amen, this, the application to us today, amen, is that we are not to present the sacrifice of Christ, which is the message of the cross, Amen. We're not to present the in the gospel of Christ, which is, you know, some people say, well, it's the gospel of Christ. That is right. But the gospel, the good news of Christ is what he did at Calvary. Amen. So the gospel of Christ mm -hmm. is uh, the, the message of the cross, yes. the, the message of Christ in him crucified. That is the gospel, that is the good news, amen. amen. That is where God works, amen. That's where you find his grace and his mercy. That's where you find his provision. That's where you find healing, deliverance. That's where you find all things that pertains to life and godliness. God doesn't have another place somewhere that we go to by faith and receive something from him. Amen. Amen. There's no other place that we meet up with God. The meeting Amen. place Amen. that God has Praise given God. us where we can meet with God is at Calvary's cross. Amen. Amen. That is where we meet up with God. Amen. Amen. Through his son, the daysman, as Job would refer to him, amen, the mediator, yes. which uh, Paul would refer him as, amen. The, there's one God, one mediator between us and God, the, which is the man, Jesus Christ. And it's the cross that makes him that one mediator, okay? So uh, that's the Old Testament. Now let's look over to Galatians. Let's move into the New. And there are several places I could go, but I just want to bear down maybe just in Galatians chapter 5. So let's look what it says in Galatians chapter 5. And uh, let's, uh, let's, let's just begin in verse 7. I'm going to read three or four verses of Scripture. Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 7. And listen to what he says here. He said, you did run well uh, under the ministry of Paul, the Galatians did begin well. Amen. There's been a lot of people that has begun well. They ran well. And then some, someone along the way brought in something other than that which caused the, the church and the, the people to run well. Amen. And uh, you did run well. And who, and so he said, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Amen. So when leaven comes in, you're no longer partaking of the whole lamb and partaking of Christ and him crucified exclusively. Amen. You're no longer obeying the truth. Our obedience is to the faith, and that faith is to be anchored in the cross. Amen. Amen. So now, because the leaven has been allowed to come in, and we allow this to come in, people allow it to come in. Right. And uh, so now they're no longer obeying the truth. Paul said you're no longer running uh, on the proper path. Amen. Amen. You're no longer you're no longer in the gospel race. That's right. Amen. You know what? You no longer run it well. Just sticking in words that the Apostle Paul used here. You did run well. How, who, so Paul is saying there's always a who. There's someone that the enemy used to bring this leaven into the body of Christ, of the body of Christ, amen, I was built upon the message of the cross that has hindered them, amen. You did run well. Who did hinder you? That's how the enemy works. He works through people, yes. always working through people, amen, and the majority of his time, the time that he's working, 99% of the time, probably 99.9% .9 of the time, he's working through ministers and ministries of some degree of some sort or some title. He's, that's who he chooses to work that's through he does, because he can influence and affect a huge segment of the body in, in a large amount of people 
through an established minister or ministry. So that's the avenue that he is seeking to work through. How the enemy can influence a large amount of people with one effort through one individual. Amen. That's how he works. That's how he does. And uh, Paul said, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the, the truth? Amen. I'm going to stick with the note here. Paul is referring to false teachers here who were attempting to pull the Galatians away from the cross to other things. And at the, at the, the writing of this letter, they had, these false teachers had been quite successful in their effort. Their enemy had been quite successful just as it was in Corinth when Paul would deal with them. And that's the reason you see the message of the cross going forth so boldly uh, to the church in Corinth because the enemy, false apostles, false brethren had come in, brought in 11 Judaizers who were inserting the law back into the church. And uh, so here we are again. Now let's just go back to verse 7. I don't think I can say this enough. I want this to sink in for us to see this and get a hold of it. You did run well. Who, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Now, that obedience, once again, uh, people want to spin off and make that obedience into any number of things that we do. It's, it's, not, a, it's not something that we do. It's uh, maintaining our belief. Amen. Well, our, our obedience is to the faith. To keep the faith. Hallelujah. And that's how we obey the truth. That's it. We keep our faith. So our obedience is to the faith. Amen. Amen. And then if our obedience is to the faith, then God works in us. Amen. But if our faith is moved to something else, we're no longer running well. Amen. We have allowed the leaven or whatever uh, false teachers to bring in something that has influenced us. Next thing you know, uh, we're in trouble. And if we stay there and continue there, amen, it, the, the, the sin nature is going to rise back up. And then all sorts of, uh, man, we're just in big trouble then, right. amen. So to keep the, the sin nature in a dormant state, we have to maintain our faith in the cross, amen. And then also, we cease to be a, uh, when, when we allow the leaven to come in, False teachers to influence us. We cease to be laborers in the harvest. <clears throat> we immediately cease to be laborers in the harvest. Now we might continue in our labor, but we cease to be a soul winning Amen. church right. because a soul cannot be saved apart from preaching the cross. Yes. And that saved soul cannot grow and mature apart from preaching the cross. So we come in by the cross, we continue at the cross and the cross will take us home. Amen. So he said, verse eight, this persuasion came not of him, speaking of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit didn't lead you in this direction. Holy Spirit didn't lead you in this path. Right. Now, what we're seeing is a lot of people today, right now, we're seeing people call this interference or this uh, leaven, and, and, and they say, well, this is of the Lord. This is of the Holy Spirit. When it's not, how do we know it's not? Because the focus is not on the cross. That's how we know. Amen. The cross is our instrument for discerning. Amen. It said, this persuasion came not of him, the Holy Spirit, who calls you. The Holy Spirit, guess what? He always calls us to Christ in him crucified. He called us to that, the, the Holy Spirit drew us to the cross to enter in and be saved. And then guess what? The, the Holy Spirit is calling us to the cross after. That's what Amen. he's doing. Always doing. Amen. Always. That's what he's doing. And uh, Second uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 11, when he's calling us and presenting us unto death. Amen. Amen. Calling us. Presenting us to death. He's drawing us. Amen. Calling us and presenting us to death. Amen. For Jesus' sake. So that the life of Christ might be manifest in our mortal flesh. The only thing that's going to manifest in these that are embracing that leaven is flesh. 
that which is of self, that which is of flesh, amen. That's the only thing. And, and, and corruption, all of that is being manifested, amen. If it's not dealt with, uh, that body, that church, and that people are, are in big trouble. They're already uh, got one foot on that road to destruction, amen. And it says, a little leaven leaveth the whole lump. So here we are. Uh, Paul is tying this leaven the same word that was used in Exodus chapter 34 and verse 25, same meaning, thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. I mean, we're not to present uh, the cross with leaven. Anything amen. tied to it is corrupting the, the whole, amen. amen. And, and look what Paul said. He said, a little leaven, corruption, leaveneth, corrupts the whole love. Amen. Let's read the note right there. Lump. Did I say lump? A uh, little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A Amen. little contaminates, corrupts, and destroys the whole. Yes. And it will if it's not dealt with and dealt with quickly. Amen. 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 And, and so uh, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. The introduction of a small amount, and listen to the words of the note here, the introduction of a small amount of false doctrine, that's your leaven, uh, is, is, is identifying it as false doctrine. Amen. The introduction of a small amount of false doctrine will ultimately consume the entirety of the belief system. Amen. So if we allow just a little bit to come in, amen, if it's not dealt with, if it's not purged, if it's not identified, repented of, and removed, amen, it will ultimately consume, the word used there will ultimately consume the entirety of the belief system, amen. So we, 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 you need to know this, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I've watched ministers over the, over the years, you know, they let their guard down. They allow a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, and a little bit there. And the next thing you know, amen, over a period of time, maybe even years, because Satan is subtle in his work, amen. He, he's subtle, and over a period of time, a span of years, next thing you know, uh, the complete, the whole belief system has been corrupted because they allow a little leaven here to come in. And it just manifested more and more and more. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to come to grips with this being the truth. Yeah. Amen. The word of the Lord is right, and all of God's works are done in truth. We have to understand that what God's word is saying here is right, whether we like it or oh, not, is still, right. still right. Whether we embrace it, whether we receive what's being said, it is still right. No matter uh, our position that we take in the matter, God's word is still right. Now, I'm going to stay with that for just a moment or two there. And he said in verse 10, I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. So Paul is is, is 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 he has confidence that his this letter that he's written to Galatians is hopefully will turn them around. He has confidence in that his this letter that is inspired by the Holy Spirit, Amen. That it will turn these around. At least that's the hope. That's the prayer. That's the intent. Paul says he has confidence. I have confidence in, but the thing of it is, now here's the point I want to make. If we just look, if we just zip our lips and if we don't deal with these things, as Paul has is done here in Galatia, amen, all through the, the letter he wrote to the churches in Galatia, if we just ignore it, Amen. If we don't deal with it, amen, well, it's just going to manifest and get worse and worse and worse. And if we don't deal with it, God will hold their blood, hold us accountable yes. of their blood. Amen. Yes. Paul said in Acts chapter 20 and verse uh, 30, there about maybe 28, 29, uh, he said, I, 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 I withheld nothing from mm -hmm. you and I'm free from the blood of all men. He preached, he taught, and he warned. Amen. So we leave off the warning. Uh, 
part, we're not really preaching the truth, amen, because the, if we call the word of God truth, if we call the scriptures truth, and it is, amen, it most certainly is, uh, over half of the Bible is about warning. It's about the lie. Amen. Over half of it is about the lie. So the lie is anything that moves us away from the truth. And it has to be dealt with. And it has to be dealt with strongly at times for the sake of of the souls of the people, amen. Nobody's motive is ever to, tear, to to bash anyone, to tear down any ministry. The the motive is always for people to run well, just as it was in verse seven, amen, to, to remain on the path of the just, to continue on the narrow path that God honors, to remain in the faith and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, amen, amen. praise God. That's the reason we warn. We don't, we don't want to build us up, amen. We're not trying to tear anybody down. We're not trying to build us up in the process, amen. The, the motive is the love of God within uh, and that's motivating us for the souls and the sake of the people, amen. Are uh, and, and, and y'all in agreement with that, amen. But he said, I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none other wise minded now look what he says but he who troubles you Paul is, is bringing attention back to he that that one that's bringing this leaven in and it may be more than one he does say he oftentimes it's not a singular effort oftentimes there's multiple hands involved multiple um, um, Piece, multiple mouthpieces, multiple people that's involved. May have been just one person here. But it says he, and he could be very well referring to just, you know, seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, and that person that was bringing these things in. And he said, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment. Amen. So Paul is saying, <laughs> You know, which is something that we don't like to hear. You know, if you don't turn, identify what's going on, purge the, the body of the leaven, amen, you're going to bear the, his, the judgment of the Lord, amen. amen. This is what he's saying. These are words we don't like to say. This is words that people don't like to hear. But judgment is at hand to those that continue uh, to embrace, promote, support, and feed uh, people leaven, amen. And, uh, and it yes. says... Uh, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he be. Let's read the note. Judgment will ultimately come on those who attempt to present a way of salvation other than Christ and him crucified. Amen. So ha having said these things and the, and the, the weightiness of the day and time in which we live. We're in the last days of the church age, but we also see, see a, it is obvious, it's easily Amen. seen to those who are able Amen. to judge. Those that are leaning Amen. to something else, they're not able to judge because they're part of the problem. But those who have their faith anchored in the cross and are only looking to Christ and Him crucified, they're able to see these things manifesting within the body in a great way. Yes. Amen. So uh, that's where we are today. We need to be aware of that. Amen. Praise God. And once again, we deal with these things because uh, I'm in big trouble with God if we don't. Uh, amen. I'm going to have to stand before the Lord one day. Amen. And I'm, I, I, I'm not going. I, I refuse to allow myself to be uh, for the Lord to point His finger at me and say, "Well, you know, you, you, for whatever reason, uh, you did not warn my people and find myself, you know, their souls upon my hands." I refuse to do that. People uh, may despise me, hate me for that. Amen. And, and, and they may call me a troublemaker and so on and so forth. But nonetheless, 
Amen. That day is fastly approaching where we'll all stand before the Lord. And Paul said we'll be judged according to his gospel, Amen. which is the message of the cross. So, yes. Yeah, so after having said that, I think I'm just going to be quiet uh, for a moment. And just turn it over to Brother John and let him pick up from right there. Amen. I may jump in along the way. May need some help. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right. Talk about the the whole burnt offering, the Lamb of God, the Lamb without spot, without blemish. And I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, um, some key words that come to my mind about, you know, diligence, um, you know, about how we need to keep preaching the cross constantly, making this known, you know, because I'm gonna to go to Peter in a moment about how those that that are not diligent, he, told, he tells us to be diligent in 2 Peter chapter three, um, because those that are unlearned, they rest the scriptures. Wow. So when you think of- uh, Twist. Not, you know, twist, and I was thinking also about Paul said in Timothy about the church will not be able to endure sound doctrine in the end times. And endurance has to do with patience. Um, by not having patience, if you look up that word patience, it's one of the definitions of patience is endurance. You know, the church is not able to endure sound doctrine because they 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 they, they say there's more to it than the cross. It's gotta be more, you know. They're not satisfied with the lamb. But I was looking over here um, in Proverbs 8 and 8 and 9. It goes along with what you said about we got to make it plain, you know, and those that have understanding. You said something along those lines, and I thought about this. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. Yes, yes. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. Praise God. We see right there that God does not accept anything perverse, anything forward, any, any leaven at all. This is God speaking. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse. They are all plain yeah. to him who understands right. and right to them who find knowledge. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, and I, I, I jot it down, Matthew 13, 12. Jesus said to him that has shall be given. Right. And to him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. And that has to do with, you know, the correct understanding. You know, more light has to do with light. You know, if we're if we stay in the light as he is in the light, you know, Psalms we read the other day, Psalms 39, I think it's verse 8 or 9, it says, In your light, O Lord, we shall see light. Right. You know, and, and those that see the truth and they and they and the Lord he reveals it to us. We we won't fight against it if you know if we know this truth is this truth is what works. Amen. Praise God. I got um another scripture. I want to go to Second Peter in a second, but I was going along what you said over in uh Exodus uh 34 25. I want to read that again, then I'm gonna go to Leviticus chapter 6. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Right. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. And I I thought about something else that kind of goes along with that. I think it does. And maybe y'all can help me explain it. But it says in, the, in Leviticus 6, 12 and 13. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out, and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and he shall burn therein the fat of the peace offering. The, the fire shall ever be burning. I love that. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. I want to I read the note in verse 12. Is the, the fire that burns and was to never go out testified on the one hand to the unceasing delight of God in the sacrifice of Christ and on the other hand to his unceasing hatred of sin. Yes, yes. False teachers today put this fire out by denying the doctrines of the atonement 
and of the wrath to come. The fire address, addresses both atonement and wrath. You know, the, yes, the, fire, yes. the, the fire of the altar represents, and when we see the cross, when we hear the true cross message, that we see the meaning of the cross, which means judgment of sin and also the, you know, the atonement, God's love. We see God, God reveals, you know, that our sin, we see our sin yes. put Christ on that cross. And we know, if we know that's what saved us in the beginning, praise God. And God hates sin, and he also hates false doctrine. Why can't the church get a hold of that? Yeah. We know we come to the cross for our sin, and we, we those of you listening, you know that it was your sin. <laughs> you had to, you know, when we got saved, it was because of our sin. We had to repent of our sin. He died for our sin. But then it seems like the church has an issue, as you said, the issue with the blood. He talked one time right, he preached about right. that, that woman with the issue of blood. He preached a message called the, an issue with the blood. Yes. The church has an issue with the blood for all things. So they don't have a problem with the blood for their sin coming. Well, I, I already took care of the cross. I, I came to the cross for my salvation. And, and people get so bent out of shape about false doctrine when we deal with that. But God hates it all. He hates sin and he hates living. Right. Praise God. Uh, we, we, go, we can go just a little bit further than that. What you're saying is absolutely right. But uh, that fire is to never go out. Amen. And, uh, you know, the, when you look at Elijah's altar on Carmel, you know, God sent the fire when he put everything in order. Amen. So it identifies with his acceptance of the offerer. You know, if, if we offer up the proper sacrifice, then he accepts the offerer, amen. Yes. And he accepts our he accepts us based upon our faith in the sacrifice. Thank and God. it also Praise speaks God. of judgment, amen. If you're not embracing the cross and what Jesus there did, what judgment, God's judgment uh, falls upon us. But if our faith is in the cross, the judgment falls upon him. Mm -hmm. Amen. His death on the cross. He was crucified, sacrificed uh, for us. That's the atonement that you're talking about there. But also another meaning of that fire is to never go out. Speaks of the refiner's fire because he's always sanctifying us, you see. Burning out, melting out uh, uh, the dross and removing that so that... Uh, you know how the finer looks. When I say finer, I'm talking about the uh, uh, the silversmith. You know, he'll put that silver in a, in, in a, in a cauldron, I guess you could call it that. He heats it up, you know, and, and in the process of refining that silver, the dross and the impurities rise to the top, and then he scoops that away. He mm -hmm. removes that those impurities, and what that finer, which Christ is the Amen. finer, Praise God. Christ is the yes. finer. Amen. What he's looking for by heating that that material up and removing that dross is he's looking for his reflection, you see. So the sanctification process, amen, that fire is to never to go out in our lives because we're in constant need always. always. Uh, for Christ to be revealed in our life more and more. It's a constant process, amen. We're, uh, the sanctification process, amen. It's always less of us, more him. Let less of me be seen and more of Christ. So that finer is what the Holy Spirit is delivering us over to in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 11, which takes place at death. Amen. You see, amen. Where the Holy Spirit's handing us over to death, 2 Corinthians 4 and 11. Amen. For Jesus' sake, it's so that Christ is manifested yes. in our mortal Hallelujah. flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is more and more. Amen. That's an ongoing. That's amen. We don't constant. graduate uh, at any point in time uh, from that process. Amen. amen. And that's a process of making us more and more into the image of Christ. Now, let me say this. It's not a process of removal uh, of sin, okay? Uh, we are delivered from sin the moment that we believe, amen? Hallelujah. Yes. Romans chapter 6 and verse 14, 
or Romans chapter 6 and verse 11, what does it say? Reckon. Reckon yourself indeed to be reckoned. That's what the Bible says, right. Romans chapter 6 right. and verse 11. Reckon yourself indeed to be, right. to be, mm -hmm. not a process there, amen, to be dead under sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. But but the process is a is a it is Christ being seen in our life more and more Hallelujah. and more, amen. Thank Praise you. God. And, and, and I could go on and on with that. There's more to it. That, that's the main mm -hmm. thrust of it, amen. So don't that fire is not to go out, amen. Hallelujah. And 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 that's where a lot of people draw back mm -hmm. uh in that process, amen. Uh, because it gets too hot for those things that we want to hold on to. And the heat's going to get rid of right. a few things that we're right. trying to hold on to. So, uh, you know, guess what? You know, when that happens, when we get to a place that we that we don't care to grow anymore, uh, amen, you, the enemy recognizes that. He's going to send somebody, amen, right. with a, 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 a leaven, a message of leaven to draw you away. Right. He's going to come and going to tell you, you flesh. Exactly right. what you want to hear at that moment. Right. And now you have become rebellious to the mm -hmm. faith, the will, and the plan, and the purpose of God in your life. You'll never realize it. You'll never realize. So many people never, ever, truly, ever realize the, everything that God desired for them because they refused to continue on in that fire and allow God to continue to purge them and to mold them and to make them and to shape Amen. them. Amen. And that, my friend, is where we find the need for the perseverance that we're talking about. Yeah, endurance. Endurance. That's right. That's right. Patience, that's right. Patience, right. perseverance, right. amen. Allowing God to work on us. Yeah. Simon Peter said, think it's not strange. Right. Like it's not strange the fiery trial that's that right. you're involved in, amen. Right. Go ahead. A couple go more ahead. thoughts. Go ahead. Um, that go ahead. fire that should never go out. Also, I was thinking as you was talking, I was thinking about that shows you the constant preaching of the cross. You know, we're not, oh, just yes. as the fire Absolutely. is to not ever go out, which represents the cross, yes. judgment, what God did at the cross, what Jesus done at the cross. So therefore, we need to preach what works. We Absolutely. preach what, you know, represents the cross. We constantly Absolutely. preach that. And I was thinking about what Peter said real quick. You know, uh, he talked about in verses, verses before 13, he said, nevertheless, we... We, according to his promise, and the promise has to do with of a, the new day that is coming, Isaiah 65, talking about the new heaven and the new earth. But he said, and and wherein dwells righteousness. Right. See, now he's trying to prepare us the meaning of righteousness now so we'd be ready for that city yeah, that yeah. has righteousness. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we got to know what righteousness mm -hmm. is. So he's preparing us. It's through Christ. In Christ is our righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. I was thinking of what Paul said in Philippians 3, 9, that I may be found in him when he returns, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness which is by faith of God, which is by faith of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. You know, you know, and then talk about being made conformable, one that's dead, talk about the fellowship of the suffering. So we see right there in the way Paul preached that the cross is for everything. Amen. You know, being found, you know, the fellowship of the suffering, being made conformable unto his death. That's the same thing as Romans 6, you know, that. Brings us back to Romans six, being baptized into his death. Yes. You know, being made for being made conformable. Oh, and, and Peter preached the same thing. You know, people were trying to say, well, they preached it no. They preached the same thing. They didn't preach any different. They had different vocabulary, maybe, but it was the same message. Let me show you. Let me read the rest of this, then I'll turn it over. It says, uh, it says the reason that church over revelation was lukewarm. Is because it didn't want to continue to in the fire. Amen. Right. Come on. Amen. 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 That's the reason they were lukewarm. It's because they didn't want to continue in the fire. God said, I'm going to spit you out of my mind. Amen. Now go ahead. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. Um, and, 
and accounted the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. I love it. Oh, Amen. see, he took the rebuke. He he grew. That's why he was able to say, I'm getting Amen. ahead of myself. But that's why he said grow Amen. in grace and in the knowledge he knew of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because he was able to endure sound doctrine and grow. And and it says, Our beloved brother Paul is according as unto the wisdom given unto him has written unto you. Remember now, he said, be diligent. I'm trying to tie this together because he, because all this explains itself. Scripture explains scripture right here. If you just, people just take the time to study. Look at it. As also in all his epistles, speaking in, in though, notice this. Talking about that fire shall never go out. The cross always needs to be preached because it says also in all his epistles, all his epistles. We need to get a hold of that. Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Amen. Notice he says in all his epistles. I know I'm repeating myself. Paul, he preached the same thing. But in which are some things hard to be understood, which they, and what does it mean by that? It simply means the natural man, first of all, does not understand the things that's of, right. of the spirit and the carnal man, the carnal-minded right. Christian. Right. The right. carnal Christian does not understand if they're not hearing sound doctrine, if they're not hearing the cross constantly preached. <coughs> that's why there's so many. That's what, see, a misunderstanding of the cross or a, a denial of the cross, anything negative regarding the cross is where all false doctrine has started. That's why there's all false doctrine all and all these different works of men, not works of God, is stem from a from people doing what Peter said not to do. Um, you know, rest in the scripture. He said, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, which means to damage the scripture, twist them and damage, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. See, therefore, beloved. You therefore, beloved, see, you know these things before. Beware lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked. Just like Paul said to the Galatians, you know, somebody came in, some who, <laughs> one of those who, who has influenced you. Yes, and so right. Peter is saying, beware lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness Read verse 18. I want to explain that for, for a few seconds. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Notice in verse 18, in that one phrase, in that one verse, we see everything we need is in our Lord and Savior Jesus. He said grow in grace. We got saved by grace yes, yes. through faith. And what Christ done at the cross. Amen. And he says right here, grow in that same place. Back to that place. Amen. That same place. Amen. Grow in grace and in the knowledge Amen. of our Lord. That phrase is very important. We read over that often. We just, oh, that sounds so simple. We think it is a simple statement, but it's very powerful. Grow in grace and, the, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That tells us right there, that phrase. Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's the same thing Paul said in Galatians 1. I think it's verse 3. You know, he said we're saved and sanctified. You know, he gave himself for our sins. I know, I just thought of it. He gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. He Notice at the cross, it's all at the cross. He gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us yes. at the same place. Absolutely. At that same place. That's, you know, Amen. my Lord. Now, 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 Son of Peter said, we could grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. But the church has turned that word grace into an excuse. Amen. You know, instead of, instead of the intent that God had in the meaning of the word of God, you know, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 6, when you understand, come to know, and hear the grace of God in truth, there shall bring forth fruit. Amen. Fruit of Christ's likeness. Amen. Um, but 
that grace, the same grace that you're talking about here where we grow. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation, same grace. Mm -hmm. And if the grace of God that brings salvation uh, has appeared unto all men, it simply means it's available the same way to all people. And uh, Amen. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us, yeah, uh, teaching us. So that grace is teaching us, amen. equipping us, amen. building us up, amen, strengthening us and helping us. That is the grace of God that flows when our faith is anchored in the cross, amen. Praise if we God. want the grace of God, our faith has to be consciously and knowingly yes. in the sacrifice. It doesn't just happen. We know, we must know, I have, must have my faith in the cross, knowingly and consciously having my faith in the object that God has given me <laughs> to put the faith that he has given me. Amen. And then when we do that, we have this grace that not only saves, that brings salvation, but in the, after that, or immediately it begins and yes. continues throughout our lifetime, yes. it's teaching us, it's equipping us, it teaching us that denying ungodliness, worldly lusts, Amen. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So we see here plainly that the grace of that the grace that comes from God through faith in the cross is not an excuse yeah. to live like we want to, or like the well, it's really the flesh that wants to. Amen. Mm -hmm. Like the world's living. No, mm -hmm. the grace of God in truth teaches us and is equipping us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and to, that we should live soberly, that's wisely, amen, wisely and, and, and righteously and godly in this present world, amen. So the church has turned the grace of God into something that God never intended for it to be. We're bringing forth the truth. The word Lord is right. Amen. What you do with it. Amen. Once we present it to you, it is up to you what you do with it. You can continue to pretend. Amen. You can continue to just uh, uh, make believe. Amen. Or you can come and embrace the truth and truth will deliver and set you free. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, <clears throat> the, the, I wanted to jump in. I just didn't want to interrupt you any more. Amen. But uh, let's let's look over to Exodus real quick. I'm going to save you some time, Brother Jane. Let's look at Exodus chapter 21. Exodus chapter 21 and beginning in, uh, let's, uh, let's look in verse 23. Okay, all right. Exodus chapter 21, verse 23 says, You shall not make with, with me gods of silver, neither shall you make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth shall you make unto me, and shall sacrifice thereon your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep, your oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto you, and I will bless you. Now, once again, what God is saying here, I won't record my name. I won't put my name on anything that's other than the sacrifice of Amen. my son. That's it. Amen. You're going to find my staff of approval. The fire is going to fall. Amen. Acceptance, and which is God's judgment. God's judgment either means acceptance, acceptance or rejection. Right. Amen. Amen. And he's only accepting what Jesus did, Calvary. He's rejecting everything else. So he said, in all places where I record my name, that is where the, the sacrifice, Christ and him crucified, is being embraced. That's God where his his name was and, and he said, there, now listen to what God's saying. He's saying, there at the cross, I will come unto you. 
Amen. God's not moved toward us. He doesn't have a relationship with us any place apart from the cross. Amen. Amen. The cross is our meeting place with God. Amen. I want to add something to what you just Go said. Right Lord, right just lay this on Go my ahead. heart. The Bible says that at that place that God has gave Jesus a name above every, every name. name. That place. That place. Yes. Where he was crucified. Absolutely. That's why he's given the name that is above every name. Yeah, absolutely. And in that name is where his stamp of approval is. Absolutely. Hallelujah. That's yeah. good. Christ Hallelujah. crucified. Praise Hallelujah. And he said, in all places, that all places there is identifying with everywhere with people's embracing the sacrifice. Amen. And we're not the only ones. It's not just us. Hallelujah. Amen. There are a few, but they are a few. And that's not me saying that. That's Jesus that's right. saying that. Because he said, few, few. there be that find it. I'm, I'm echoing what Jesus is saying. Amen. Few there be that find it. Amen. Straight as the gate, narrow. This is what we're preaching here tonight is the narrow way. It's always been narrow. It's not getting any more narrow. It's not becoming more and more narrow. We're seeing it for how narrow it has always been. That's right. We're seeing it more clearly. We're seeing the narrowness. Amen. It's not getting any more. That's the only place that you can meet with God on good terms is in this narrow way. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. So he says, so this is that place where he said, this narrow way, Christ and him crucified, there I will come with to you, there I will bless you. It's not God's blessings any other place. People say, well, the Lord bless me. We hear it all the time. Amen. God's really blessed me. The Lord's blessed me. Well, you are actually deceived into believing and pretending and thinking that the Lord's blessing you when he's not. Because the Bible says, if you're not meeting me at the cross, I cannot, I won't bless you. Right. It's not the blessings of the Lord, amen. There may be uh, things that we label as blessings, but it's not coming from the Lord. Amen. Apart, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a curse. Right. Apart from the Lord, Amen. Uh, That's what the Bible says. It is a curse. That's what the Bible says. He said, "I will bless you." And this is from. That's good right there, Amen. Yeah. Praise God. In verse twenty-five, it said, "If if you make, if you will make me an altar of stone, which is right, the 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 their their building of altars would normally be before the temple was constructed, uh, or the the tabernacle of uh, Solomon and some of these uh, finer tabernacles, Amen. It was generally made of a, a heap of a mound of dirt. They would put stone on it, just like Elijah uh, when he rebuilt the altar on Carmel. Amen. He stacked up stones. Normally, it would be twelve stones. Amen. The number 12 is always identified. That's God's number uh, for, for the government. In other words, so God is saying, this is where I work. Amen. This is where I govern. This is where I work. That's what the number 12 means. But anyhow, it says, you shall not, you shall not build it of hewn stones. In other words, God says, if you put your hammer or tool to it, and shape it in any fashion, that's a work of, of the flesh. That's you're putting yourself into it. God refuses it. He won't accept it. That's leaven. That's a mixture. Somebody bringing in something other than God's way. So you, you, we're, we're told plainly not to put a tool of it and hewn it Amen. And what does the church like to do? They like to they like to put flowers all over it. They like to pretty it up and dock it up, put blue lights on it, purple lights on it. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. they like to, you know, just decorate, uh, decorate it. Amen. Right. Let folks are like man, you said it like that. Let Christ be our ornament. Amen. Amen. Let Christ be our ornament. Amen. Don't don't take a tool of any sort. 
Amen. And, 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 and try to, to pretty it up. Amen. It's to be understood uh -huh. as a bloody sacrifice. Amen. It's to be understood as a bloody cross, which to, it was, and that's what it was. Right. It was the lamb slain. Amen. When he died on that cross, his life blood poured out on, of him and saturated those, that cross and the ground under that. Amen. He said, don't take. Uh, you shall not build a bit of hewn stone, for if you lift up your tomb upon it, you have polluted it. Just as if you bring in leaven, just as if you bring in some kind of mixture, the leaven may be purty. Amen. The mixture that you bring in may be beautiful. It may, you know, it, it may be doctored up and it may be attractive to oh, the masses. Right. It's very well eaten, but yeah. God is rejecting uh, it, you see. It, it may be attractive right. to the masses, but it may but God has rejected it. Then so if that's not enough, he said, You have polluted it. Amen. What did Paul say about that one that brought in the leaven in Galatians? Said God, uh, He, he identified, said He, God, the judgment of God is going to be upon Him because He has polluted and brought in this message uh, into the right. church that was established upon right. the foundation of the cross. Amen. So then He said in verse twenty six. Neither shall you go up by steps mm -hmm. unto my altar that your nakedness be not discovered thereon. Amen. That the nakedness there is, you know, we're covered in righteousness that right. our nakedness be not seen. That righteousness is the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Christ is our righteousness. Amen. Apart from that, when we put our hand into it, we put our tool to it, right. and we're bringing mixture and leaven, guess what? Our nakedness right. uh, is being seen. In other words, we're having no covering right. about us except for fig leaves, right. and that's a product of our own doings and our own hand. God, that's saying that God is rejecting that. Right. He said, if God is wanting to look, well, he's desires to see us dead and our life hid in Christ. Right. He wants to see us in Christ, dead yes. and our life in Christ. What is that, Colossians 3, 3? Yes. yes. Uh, we are, are dead, dead in your life and in our God. life is hid in, in, in Christ. In God. Yes, amen, in God. Amen. And it says, verse 26, Neither shall you go up by steps into my altar, that your nakedness be not discovered thereon. Let me read it. No. It says, When man exalts himself above God, he only exposes his own moral nakedness. The cross of which the altar was a type must not be changed in any oh, way. Come on. If so, meaning if men try to picture or present Christ in another fashion rather than plainly Jesus Christ in him crucified, they then find themselves with another Jesus. Oh, another gospel. Another yes. gospel. Mama. Amen. It's by another spirit. He said, lifting up the two upon the stone, desiring to make it into their own likes or dislikes, thereby pollutes the message. This is the great sin of the modern church. This, remember, I've been using that terminology, the sin. Amen. We're either we're either involved in the sin or the lie, excuse me, the lie or the truth. They lie or they truth. Well, they lie is the sin that the church is involved in of taking, of, well, the, the, just turning the gospel into something other than the cross. Right. When the emphasis is on the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you are, as in the Holy Spirit is the third member of God. You heard me say well, repeatedly, we're going to keep saying it. Amen. When the emphasis uh, is of the message, the ministry, when the emphasis is on the Holy Spirit, you are presenting another gospel. He is, yes, indeed, the right. third member of the Godhead. Yes, he is vitally important. Amen. But Jesus said his importance is found in, in 
uh, Luke chapter, John chapter 16, he said, he will take of mine yes. that which I have done, yes, and he it. will show it, yes. reveal it to you, yes. and make it clear. Amen. He's the one. That's what he does. Right. He said, the Holy Spirit will not glorify himself. Amen. The Holy Spirit will not glorify men. The, glory, the Holy Spirit will not glorify ministries or ministers, no matter how popular no, they are. Right. It is flesh that is glorifying these men and ministries, not the Holy Spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit magnifies, glorifies, and exalts Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, I probably had something else on my mind, but let's turn it over to Brother James here and let him go with it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, the Bible. Yeah, I want to. I want to go back to Galatians, where where you read Galatians chapter five, five and verse ten. Okay. And it says, "But he who is troubled, you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be." And you read the note there, and I just want to, uh, you know, the note says judgment will ultimately come on those who attempt to present a way of salvation other than Christ and the cross. Let me take that a little bit further. Go ahead. It's not just them presenting another way of salvation, but anything that pertains to life and godliness when they begin to steer you away from the cross, it's leaven. Right. It's leaven. So they may come at you with salvation in Christ right. and in crucified. Yeah, they say that. Yeah. But then, here comes the leaven. Right. Mm -hmm. Here comes the leaven. What's, you know, and leaven, Jesus said over in Luke 12, Jesus said, and in the meantime, I'm in Luke chapter 12, verse 1. It says, And in the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trodden one upon another, he began to say unto his disciple, First of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, right. which is hypocrisy. And, and that word leaven, I got this, is to make light of. Right. To make light of. That's right. The church that presents Christ crucified for salvation and then goes on to lighten the cross, no longer preach the cross, and tell you that you're eternally secure just because you believe one time. That's right. But they preach something other than Christ and Him crucified. Mm -hmm. Listen, you're not growing in any of that. That's right. Can't grow. You're not That's going right. to grow in Absolutely. that. Matter of fact, if if anything, it's you just going to become religious. That's right. You're just going to become right. religious. Absolutely. And, and many today in the church, Proverbs says this: The Lord says, "Turn you at my reproof." What chapter is that? That is. Uh, Proverbs, I think it's uh, I didn't write the verse sorry. down. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's Proverbs 1 and 23. Now, many of the, now listen to what the word says. The word says, turn you at my reproof. The church is not turning at God's reproof. They're turning away from the reproof. Right, absolutely. They're not turning. He says, if you'll turn to my reproof, mm -hmm. he says, behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. Yes. Cross over. It says, I will make known my words unto you. This is what the word of God says. If we take his reproof, his reproof is for us to no longer be operating in flesh and religious activities and all these things that uh, that we have received from the knowledge of man, which is hypocrisy mm -hmm. and it's leaven, but that we would, but that we would do this. The Bible says, 
Therefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance. Always. This, oh. this is Second Peter. He says, always in remembrance of these things, that you know them and be established you know yes. you know in them. this present oh. truth. Come on. The only way that you're going to be established in Christ Jesus yes. is by the preaching of the cross. Right. The Bible says that it is foolishness unto those who are perishing, but unto us who are saved, it's the power of God. Right. What power is that that we have? I'm going to keep reading in 2 Peter. It says, yes, I think it me as long as I am in this tabernacle, long as I'm still breathing, uh -huh. long as I'm still sitting here and I got a breath in me, that I stir up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that surely I must put off this tabernacle, not knowing when it's going to happen, folks, but one day I'm leaving this place. <coughs> Don't know when it's going to happen. Even as the Lord Jesus Christ has shown me, Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. What things? These things that Christ has done at Calvary. This sacrifice that he has made to establish you in the only present truth that can actually get you out of darkness and place you into light. And, and, and begin to grow you in this grace and knowledge. And he right. says, For we have not followed cunning, cunningly devised fables. Come on. When we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but you were eyewitnesses of his, of his magistry. Right. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice from heaven, I said, when there came such a voice to him from the exceeding glory. Excellent. Glory. So the excellent glory, thank you. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. This is my beloved Son in who I am well pleased. Hallelujah. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard. When we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Thereunto you do well if you take heed. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Now this taking heed is taking heed unto the reproof. That God is showing you that you've always operated in flesh and, and these things that you thought were right, and all these this this hypocrisy, everything that you thought were right, and come back to the truth, where you and then listen to what it says until the dawn until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart, right. knowing this first that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation, come on. for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. It didn't come by the will of man. It says, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. But there were false prophets among, also among the people, even as there is false teachers among you. Yes. Who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even deny the Lord who bought them and brought and bring upon them swift destruction. Anything other than Christ and Him crucified, listen, it brings corruption. Right. Yes. It brings leaven. It brings deceit. And it ultimately brings doubt in your heart. Right. If you give right. ear to yes, it. Yes, yes. Right. And, and that's what it does. 1 Timothy 4, 6 tells us if you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, you shall be a good minister of Jesus That's Christ. Right. Which includes warning. He talked about warning. Everything. Right. Everything. We don't leave off the warning. We don't That's leave off minister. all these things. 
But he said, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto you have been attained. It says, but refuse. Now here's the warning. The warning comes with it in 2 Timothy 4, 6, and 7. It says, but refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise yourself rather unto godliness. Now, you just read out of, out of Titus uh, chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, right. how the grace of God appears. It teaches us to deny ungodliness. Yeah. This is how we live godly, how we live godly in this present life is by taking up the cross That's and right. being determined not to know anything but Christ and Him crucified. Right. Amen. But now you've got all these who instead of turn, instead of receiving the rebuke and turning to God that they might be filled with His Spirit and shown the Word of God in truth and their eyes be enlightened unto the truth. Amen. Now they're biting off on all these other things and it's really causing many to stumble. Right. It's right. I would say causing confusion in the right. body. Causing confusion. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, and that's exactly what Paul was doing. You said it right, you know, when we were talking about salvation, you know, in Galatians. When you hear me or anybody at this table speak of salvation, we're talking about you know, we come in by the cross and we continue in the cross. The whole Amen. Man, the whole Amen. That's, that's what we're referring the to. Whole count. The whole Because count. that is what Paul is saying when he yes. uses that word. Hallelujah. Uh, we're not of them that draw back unto perdition. Amen. Amen. We're not to draw back. If we draw back, the only place we can draw back to is to perdition. But we are of them who believe, amen, saving unto the saving the of the soul. We I come in and, and, and our requirement in this thing is to continue to believe. And to I want continue. to remind you again of what Paul said. But Paul, uh, here in the letter to the church in Galatians, remember what he said there in verse chapter 1 and verse 6. Paul said, I marvel that you are so soon. So soon. It happened quickly with them. Mm -hmm. Right. So soon. So soon. Removed from him. I know I spoke earlier about, you know, a period of time. You know, Satan saw. Amen. So it can, it, you know, it can happen either way. Suddenly or over a period of time. Amen. But he said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him, the Holy Spirit, who called you into the grace of Christ. Uh -huh. unto, then look. He called it another gospel. Another gospel. Another gospel. Yes. Well, what were they moved over to? Well, mainly it was the law. The Judaizers came in and influenced these. Amen. And he said, which is not another, but there be some who trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So, you said it. I'm going to 100% agree with you. You said it. Amen. If we're not continuously pointing the people to the cross for life and living, for sanctification, set apart for service, growth, all of that, and, and, and everything that we have need of, we have, according to the word of God, uh, have perverted the gospel. We have preached it's the no longer right. the gospel. We have perverted yes. the gospel. Amen. So it's not well and good, it's not well enough to just say, well, they're saved. You know, Paul never preached sanctification apart from justification. He didn't say, well, they're justified and they're okay. He didn't preach that. You won't find it in his teachings. When he, when, he spoke to, when he spoke about salvation, he was including the being justified and sanctified. Because if, if, if we don't stay in it, we will lose the hope of the gospel. We will lose our soul. We will lose our salvation. That's the reason Paul warned. We preach, we warn, we teach. And, 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 he, and he said in, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23, amen, to continue in the faith. 
to be steadfast, grounded and settled. Grounded and settled. I always stay steadfast. I just just well, they same, said for the same, same thing. Grounded and settled. Yeah. Steadfast. And, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. What is the hope of the gospel? Entrance into salvation and then the process of sanctification. The hope of the gospel. Amen. That it's no longer I, but Christ lives in me. Amen. That's the hope of the gospel. If God does it, but I read it earlier. God says, if you want me to work in your life and bless me, bless you, yes. you're going to have to be found at the rock that I'm standing yeah. on. You're going to have to which keep is your company. company. That's right. You're going to, that's right. <laughs> see, so you see, there's not two gospels. On, no. There's not right. two salvations. Right. You know, there's not right. those that are just justified by faith and then there are those cross preachers. No, right. no there, there's not two ways. There's right. one God, one Amen. faith, one salvation. Amen. There's one way. One way. Amen. Amen. And it's always faith in the cross from the beginning to the ending. We're doing great damage when we say, well, you're all right just because you're saved. No, that person that's saved is not all right. He might be saved, but he's not going to stay saved if he doesn't know how to live saved. Hallelujah. Amen. If he's not instructed to be grounded in the cross from the beginning all the way to the end, he is a candidate for a life of misery and ultimately the loss of his right. soul. Right. Amen. So you've got these ministers out here that are switching, turning things around from emphasis on the cross. Oh, well, we just, we're just going to preach about the Holy Spirit. And I'm not making light of the Holy Spirit, but that's not the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ and him crucified and that the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, right, we did a gospel. Where to the bone, I speak Hallelujah. in tongues, Amen. probably in more Christ. than any of you here. <laughs> Amen. I'm Pentecostal. I'm not ashamed of that. Not Amen. Ashamed. I'm not backward about that. Amen. But that within itself is not the gospel. That's right. The gospel That's right. is the blood of Come on, Christ, preach. the Lamb of God, Hallelujah. the Lamb that was slain right. before the foundation of the world. Like yes. Amen. Um, I want to repeat what he said in Second Peter. It goes perfectly along with what you just said, everything you just said. In Second Peter 2, I mean, excuse me, 1 and 20. Because I was dealing with somebody the other day about this, somebody in my family. I, I'll be circumspect on that. But it says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. That's right. You see, there's people that say, well, you may study the Bible and find something, oh, and, and then I can study the Bible and I get another meaning out of it. How many times we heard I've that? heard that ever since I've been saved. People have said that. Well, you, well, that's, your that's what y'all think. Y'all believe this, y'all think, you know, you have your beliefs and I got my, no. It's right here in the scripture. There is no, that no prophecy, first of all, all prophecy from from the very beginning to the revelation is about Jesus Christ. Right. All the Psalms and the prophets. Hallelujah. And I told him, the loved one, I told him, I said, no, if you study the Bible, it's all going to point to Jesus Christ and crucified to all the Psalms and the prophets. And, and Revelation talks about, you know, the, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Absolutely. Jesus. Absolutely. So, it's, you know, so there it is. We have it right there in Scripture. There's no private See, that's the reason why there's so many religions and denominations and, and, and all the false doctrine is because people did exactly what Peter right. said don't do, you know. He like, said he said right there up above that, he said, he said, whereunto you do well that you take heed. Right. That you take heed. That means taking heed is not just going by what you read and you think it says, right. but diligently right. seeking the place right. forward that's that it right. be the truth. Amen. Right. And you know, we've heard this oftentimes, you know, and I know all of you out here has heard it. Well, I don't judge anybody. Right. I don't judge anybody. Well, pro a, the, the book of Psalms mm -hmm. in Psalms 106 verse 3 says, Blessed are they that keep judgment. Right. That keep judgment. 
That means that they're all going there. Everything that they do, they judge Your according to the word of, of, of truth. Right. And it right. says, and he that does righteousness at all times. At all times. That means he don't cease to look unto Jesus, but he's constantly denying self, taking up the cross. He's counting his life all but done. To gain Christ. Right. Proverbs 8 and 8. All the words God is saying this. All the words. All this words. Proverbs. All the words of my mouth mm -hmm. are in righteousness. Praise God. Amen. Where is righteousness found? Christ. In Christ. In Christ. It's found Amen. in him. Righteousness is found in the gospel. Right. Amen. The gospel he is, is Jesus God. Christ and him crucified. Amen. Right. So. All of God's words, that's what that's meaning and saying is all the words of my mouth are about Christ and Him crucified. Or it could not be in righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. So God is saying this all the words of my mouth are right are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. That means that there's nothing crooked. Or twisted. Psalm 33 and 4, the word of the Lord Hallelujah. is right. Thank God. And all Hallelujah. of God's works are done in truth. Hallelujah. Now, here's the key yes. we need to know what the Bible says, but we need to know also what it means. It. It. We have to know what it means. Amen. And just at a glance, we're not going to get that meaning. No. Amen. We are to become students, study to show thyself approved unto. God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed of himself, amen, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing or that right division is to view all scripture in the context of the cross. Yeah. The reason the Old Testament prophets said the people perish because they don't have a vision, amen, and the same happens to us when our vision is in something other than the cross. Well, our vision is Christ and him crucified. Now, with a few minutes of I've got, I'm going to close this out once again. Amen. With, uh, I've lost my play, place here. I'm going to close it out with, uh, oh my goodness. Second Timothy 4, 7, 8. Oh, uh, let's see here. So we'll pause it here we are, here we are. I almost, oh, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 17. Okay. I love this. Yes. I love this. I love this. Yes, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. This is so telling yes. right here. 1 yes. Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. Now you got to understand, you know, most people don't realize that the reason Paul wrote the church in these you know, epistles that he wrote to particular churches because there was issues in the church. Oh, yes, it was. There was, there was problems in the church, so he wrote these epistles. The church in Corinth was was in big trouble because it was being influenced by fake false apostles that had come in from Jerusalem yes, presenting uh, letters of commendation mm -hmm. and the church in Corinth was buying off on these false apostles right. and just kind of swept but not kind of did sweep the teachings of the Apostle Paul to the curb and right. that the very gospel that they were brought in on and uh, so the, they had lost focus on the cross. That's the reason you see uh, Paul over and over uh, for the preaching of the cross is them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. We preach Christ crucified. So we see that written there because that church was in trouble, headed in the wrong direction. Right. So do you see there the answer, the need, the right. need in the wrong direction? Paul, what does he do? He gives them the cross. He brings them back Praise to God. the very place yes. that they were uh, saved in the oh, beginning. Oh, oh, oh. That church that's going oh. AWOL, amen, has to be brought back to where they were oh, in. Who has bewitched you? There's the you did run well. Yes. Amen. Who yes. has bewitched you? Yes. Amen. I that you would obey uh, another spirit. Amen. So, Paul says, 
1 Corinthians 4, 17, for this cause, what I just said, yes. have I sent unto you, Timothy. Amen. Oh, Who is Lord. my beloved son, and here we are, and faithful in the Lord. Amen. Timothy is not going to bring a mixture. Come Timothy is not going to bring hypocrisy. Yes, Paul right. trusted Timothy to, when he will arrive in Corinth, to put the church in order. Amen. And to remind them, to bring them in remembrance of Paul's way. Hallelujah. Amen. Their ways was no longer Paul's ways, or Timothy would not have to come and present That's Paul's it. ways. That's, it. That's right. They're not. They're not. They're not on that narrow, straight, right path. In the path that they should be marching in. They were being influenced. That's right. They've been influenced by other voices yes. that brought in leaven, oh, that yes. brought in a mixture, that yes. brought in something that's not according to the gospel, which is Paul's way. For this cause I have sent to you, Timothy. Now, to Paul did not send someone to this uh, church in Corinth that did not understand the message of the cross for sanctification. He sent Timothy. That's right. Amen. The modern day church is giving anybody and everybody the microphone. That's Come on. right. And then just, you know, to, man, we just got to have our right. buddies and pals, you know, yeah. preach. But, right. but Paul would not have sent anyone Come on. to the church in Corinth, amen, that's just going to go there and chuck handkerchiefs. Amen. He would not send anybody to the, to, the, to the church in Corinth that's going to present anything other than the message of the cross. He wouldn't send somebody there that the emphasis, that was in trouble. The only thing that's going to pull them out of this trouble is it's the true. power of God through the cross. The, rebuke, yes. the faith for their faith to stand not in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter Thank you, 2 and verse 5 I think. Thank Amen. That their faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. See that's what these false apostles were doing. They were bringing in the wisdom of men. That's right. Because they was preaching something other than Paul's ways. That was leaven. That's a mixture. Amen. So he said for this cause have I sent unto you Timothy who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord. Come on. Faithful Come in on. the Amen. Lord. Amen. What the church needs to hear, amen, today, every church is those men and women that are faithful in the Lord. And that faithfulness is to the cross. Hallelujah. That is yes. what God identifies as faithfulness. We read it in Exodus. If you want to be blessed of me, you have to be faithful to where I'm standing. And that state, I'm standing over there on a rock that was pierced. Amen. amen. Christ in him crucified. So he said, Amen. My my beloved son, faithful in the Lord, who Paul knew he would bring the people, bring you into remembrance of my ways. And I've already said it over and over. What was Paul's ways? Oh, I'm Christ. determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That was Paul's ways. We preach Christ crucified. That was Paul's ways. It's just so evident right. here, but this this was the same thrust and emphasis of his epistles and ministry into every right. church that had every problem. Oh, it's and it's there if you desire to see the there truth. That's right. But if you desire to, to justify what you want to put emphasis on, you will be blinded right. to the truth, amen. Right. We have to desire to see the truth. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, see amen, God will reveal it to them. Yes, he will. Amen, he will, he will show it to them, amen. So the, the, he knew that Timothy would bring them into remembrance of Paul's ways, not the person of Paul, 
That's right. Come on. Amen. Paul knew that, that Timothy amazing. wouldn't go in there and just, oh, poor pitiful Paul. He's over there in jail, yeah. Yeah. shackled to a wall. Oh. He wouldn't go in there lifting up man. Come and on. Paul knew that. Come on. Amen. Amen. The gospel is not men and ministers Come and on. ministries. Amen. 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 That Paul, that he would go there and preach Paul's ways, Christ, not Lord. Paul. Amen. Paul was saved. It was I crucified for you. Amen. Well, our, our message is not men and ministries. Our message is the cross. Amen. And there's no power in Wayne Falls. There's no power in Jimmy Swaggart. There's no power in Lord Larson. There's no power in these right. ministries. Amen. The power is found in the cross. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us which are Amen. saved, it is the power of God. We read it the other day. God said, told Abraham, you call that place, not Abraham. Yeah. You don't call Abraham Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Place. But you call that place. Uh -huh. You call that place Jehovah Jireh, right. which means that God will provide. Uh -huh. If you want God to move, work, and provide in your life, you're to come to this place, that Christ, Christ and him crucified. God. Amen. Yeah, and it says there, uh, it said, uh, my ways, which be in Christ, it's not in men, it's not, it's not in this world, it's not in humanistic psychology. Amen. My ways are in Christ. Amen. Even before the foundation of the world, the cross was in Christ. It was always in Christ. It was always on his mind. He set his face like flint yes. on the Calvary. His oh, mind Lord. was always oh, about the cross. I'm We're to have a straight. mind of yeah. Christ, yeah. which to means there, our mind is to be I ever focused on the cross. Our obedience is to the cross. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And he said there, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere yeah. and in every church. So when Paul wrote this it letter changed, to the church in Galatia, he's presenting to them the avenue of truth, which is to come back to the cross. Amen. Mm -hmm. Corinth, Galatians, Philippi, Colossae. Uh, Thessalonica, whatever the church is, wherever it is, whatever, wherever the church is, no matter what the problem is, the answer is the cross because there, you, why is it the answer? Because if we're presented the cross, my will, my ways, dies there. I see it. Amen. Flesh is dead dies right there. We're dead to it brother. And then the spirit can begin to work That's again it, in our life. Amen. Sure. The spirit oh, lusts against the flesh. The I flesh lusts against the spirit. Amen. And it's not always easy to get these fleshly things out of our life. Oh, Amen. Oh. Re remember Abraham? What did God tell him? Amen. Said the bond woman and Ishmael's got, got to, to go. go. They yeah. have to be cast out. They Amen. They have to go. That because the 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 Ishmael was persecuting the, the child of promise, Amen. which was Isaac. Amen. Right. And the same thing all man. through today. Mm -hmm. If you allow the flesh to flourish and is not dealt with through the cross, Amen, it will it will persecute. Amen. The 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 spirit which is faith in the cross. Right. It, will it, it, will tear, it will frustrate. It will tear right. down. Yes, it, will. it will bring leaven in. Amen. Amen. So flesh has got to go. Yeah. It has to be expelled Hallelujah. or we cannot walk according to the spirit. Amen. You, and the spirit is always going to be faith in the cross. Amen. Yes. He, the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, he Hallelujah. will take that which is of mine Hallelujah. and he will show that to you. The Holy Spirit in closing <coughs> Never Excuse magnifies me. men, no matter yeah. who they are. That's right. Only men magnify, magnify right. men. That's right. And the, what gets me is men will magnify men and say, oh, it's of the Lord. What is not, it's of the flesh. Amen. 
You know, I like what Brother Curtis said the other day. He said, you know, flesh, self, can feel just as comfortable sitting on a church pew, uh, or more comfortable, more comfortable sitting on a church pew than it will sitting in a, in a, in a nightclub. Amen. Just think about that. Yeah, think about Amen. it. Amen. Think about that. Flesh will feel, especially in the modern day church, is catering to flesh. Depends on what church you sit in. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, feel, can just come in and sit down yeah. and uh, no change and just live, leave and still right. operate just from a fleshly right. lifestyle oh, instead true. of walking in the spirit. That's right. That's Amen. Amen. For that's Water right. Tree. Hallelujah. Well, praise God, praise God. It's been good to have been in the house of the Lord tonight. Lift your hand, give him praise. Thank you. Lord. Give him glory in the house of God tonight. He's worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Let us magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords tonight. The Lamb slain. Let us glory in him. Let us glory in what he did there. Let us glory in the cross where God forbid that I should glory in anything save the cross of our Lord and Savior whereby I'm crucified unto the world and the world is crucified unto me. I sure hope you'll join us Sunday morning. We're going to gather back up here at the Sanctuary Crossway Ministry. We're going to praise worship our great God. We're going to preach the message of the cross again. Amen. Praise God. Hope you can join us if you live within driving distance. We're just five miles West of Walmart on Highway 82, if you're not able to drive in, amen, you can log on, join us by live streaming right here on Facebook, on my Facebook page, or you can go over to our church website, crosswayministries.org. You can join us there by YouTube. But no matter how you join us, be sure and join us. Church starts at 10. God bless you, love you, each and every one. Amen.